Good morning and welcome as we're gathered on this Holy Trinity Sunday for the purpose of bringing our praise and our prayer before the God who directs us to life abundant in Jesus Christ. A few announcements for the good of the order. I didn't catch numbers for this week, but we had a thriving and amazing food distribution week again. Um, we were a tad short staffed because of people's vacations, but other folks stepped up to the plate. People were willing to be adaptable and, and work in different positions than they had worked before. And so thank you if you were part of that and please continue to keep that ministry in your prayers. Uh, a reminder that next week we begin outdoor worship at five o'clock, there will be a tent please make sure you have a mask and your own um, lawn chair or seating. Uh, and you'll be given instructions of when you get there on how to line up chairs and so forth. But I'm really looking forward to seeing many of you next Sunday at five o'clock for our first outdoor worship for the summer. And finally, I invite you all to hold our synod and its assembly in your prayers uh, this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday as we accomplish the work of the Synod, as well as elect a new bishop. So please hold that in prayer this week. And if you wish to watch, the link will be in Tuesday's announcements as well as pertinent timeframes. So with that, we take a deep breath, breathing in God's life-giving spirit, light a candle reminding us that Christ is in the midst of us, we release all of the world's anxieties and we begin with our opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Surpassing worth, we 
exalt you, we adore you, we lift high our thanks and praise. Saints and angels bow before you, here on earth our songs we raise. Glory be to Christ forever, Lamb of God and Lord of love, Son of God and gracious Savior, you have come from heaven above. On the cross you died to save us, now you reign at God's right hand. Hear our prayer, restore, forgive us, in your promise firm we stand. Holy Ghost, we now acclaim you, Lord alone, to you we call. Holy One, in faith we name you, God most high yet near to all. Jesus Christ, with God the Spirit, and the Father splendor bright, for the Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory eternal three in one and we praise your power majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning, boys and girls. We're going to hear um, we're going to hear a story about Jesus, of course, in a little bit. And there's a man who talks about the signs that Jesus does. So I kind of want to think for a little bit about signs. Uh, I suspect when you go to school, because I know out here on my street, uh, when it's time for school, they're crossing guards. They hold up stop signs. And the stop signs aren't just pretty red signs that tell the cars to stop. They're, they're signs that say there's something really important going on here, that there are really important people going on here. And that as a community, we wanna love and protect our children. So the sign says something bigger than just stop. And, um, and I have a sign to share with you. On, on Friday, as we join with our, um, with our friends at the Baptist Church and the Episcopal Church and the Methodist Church and the Presbyterian Church. That's a lot of churches. And we hold up signs along the street. And my sign says, love your neighbor, love your neighbor. It's a lovely sign, Mr. Matt painted it for me. And it isn't just, oh, look at the nice contrast, black and white, this is a pleasant sign to look at. No, this sign tells the people who drive by us that we live in a world where sometimes our neighbors aren't very well loved. In fact, sometimes they're even in danger because of the color of their skin or, or who they are or who they love or maybe where they came from. And that, that that's not a good thing. And we hold up signs like love your neighbor that point to we have a God who loves our neighbor. And my neighbor's over here, my neighbor's over there, and my neighbor's out there, and my neighbor's down the street here. They're all loved by God. And God calls me. God calls me and God calls you to love everybody. This isn't just a sign with words on it, a piece of uh, cardboard with, with some words. It's it's a way to live. It points me towards the fact that I worship a God who loves me and who loves you and who wants us all to love each other. Ugh. That's the kind of God that we have. And that's why we hold up signs. So maybe today, if you're outside playing or you're, I don't know, just looking down the street, think about the signs and what they say 
street signs where people live or stop signs or yield signs that we have to kind of make some way for other people or whatever signs you see and maybe have a conversation with your family about what are those signs pointing to? How we can love each other better. Let's ask God to help us. Hey God, you give us all kinds of signs. The best sign was Jesus. <laughs> ah, boy, didn't Jesus teach us to love our neighbor? Ah, didn't Jesus teach us that all people are important? Didn't Jesus remind us how much we are loved? So this week, oh God, help us to follow the sign of Jesus, the sign that teaches us to love everyone. And all God's children said, amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two 
they covered their feet and with two they flew and one called to another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory the pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke and i said woe is me i am lost for i am a man of unclean lips and i live among a people of unclean lips yet my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs the seraph touched my mouth with it and said now that this has touched your lips your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out then i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us and i said here am i send me the word of the lord thanks be to god we read psalm 29 ascribe to the lord you gods ascribe to the lord glory and strength ascribe to the lord the glory due god's name worship the lord in the beauty of holiness the voice of the lord is upon the waters the god of glory thunders the lord is upon the mighty waters the voice of the lord is a powerful voice the voice of the lord is a voice of splendor the voice of the lord breaks the cedar trees the lord breaks the cedars of lebanon the lord makes lebanon skip like a calf and mount hermon like a young wild ox the voice of the lord bursts forth in lightning flashes the voice of the lord shakes the wilderness the lord shakes the wilderness of kadesh the voice of the lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare and in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or, or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, oh, how can these things be? 
Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, well, how can you believe if I tell you about heaven? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sign, sign everywhere, a sign, breaking up, blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? I'd sing it, but that'd just be plain old painful for all of you. So you're just going to have to either remember the tune to this song from 1970 or take my word that those are actual song lyrics. Signs. They're helpful, right? They, they can point the way. Left turn only. Mount Reed Boulevard. English Road. Help wanted. One way or the ever popular this year this time of year, uh, lane closed or detour ahead, road work. Our world is plastered with signs, as is the gospel of John. Jesus' very first act of public ministry was itself a sign. Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding of Cana of Galilee. And then he moved on, took a little rest in Capernaum before heading into Jerusalem, where he performed his second sign, throwing that fit and overturning the tables and cleansing the temple. Signs are important. They're really important for us. They, they point, as I said to, in the children's sermon, to something beyond themselves. We don't you know, stand in ooh and awe ah at signs. Ooh, what a lovely shape to this nice red sign with the word stop on it. No, no, we look both ways. Watch what every other driver is doing because this sign points to uh, an intention, a community intention for our well being and safety. We don't admire the pretty little green signs at Mount Reed in English boulevard that intersect on the, the corner. No, we use them as a compass, right? To direct ourselves and others to a place of worship, a place of fellowship, a place where God is seen and heard and felt and tasted. Even the signs like, keep out, long hair, freaky people need not apply. More song lyrics, by the way. No trespassing. Uh, the point us to a need for grace and acceptance and a new reality in our world. So too, friends, when we as Christians, as Christ followers put up signs, we're saying something about ourselves, uh, about our faith, about our God, about, about Jesus. Nicodemus, came to Jesus at night. And the first word out of his mouth are, wow, we've seen the signs. We've noticed the signs that you've done and they're incredible. They have to come from God. This is awesome. And you almost think that maybe what he's going to say next is do it again, Jesus, do it again. Like a child happy with a roller coaster bump, do it again. But he doesn't. He doesn't. Jesus doesn't let him get out another word. And I think it's because Nicodemus is stuck on the sign, the thing right in front of him. Like 
Like he'd just be looking for more sparkle and magic. And Jesus isn't interested in giving us sparkle and magic. Jesus isn't interested in our ooing and our awing over what he's done. Jesus is not a magician. Jesus is the son of God. And by his very existence, by everything he does, he is pointing to God and God's reign in the world and God's kingdom and God's will for God's people. And Jesus has no use for us missing the deeper point. He wants to be sure the audience gets the message. Just like in those first two signs, right? The wine wasn't the point. Some of us get stuck on the fact that, hey, that must have been a really good wine. No, and the overturning of the tables, that, that wasn't the point. The point of both of those signs was that, was that God is here. God's son is here. Jesus, the anointed one, the one waited for is right here, pouring out an abundance of the best grace God has to give, standing in the temple as the living breathing locus of worship and praise. And yet, in the middle of the night, when one of their own, a leader, a leader for heaven's sakes, wants to ponder the truth that Jesus brings, he can only look at the signs, everywhere the signs, breaking up the scenery, breaking his mind because he can't read the signs. And thus, we get Jesus' line monologue on being born anew, on being born from above, describing the kingdom of God and its mysterious, awesome workings to a man who represents, oh, so many people who get caught up in the signs and can't fathom the deeper reality to which they point. But then as Jesus notes, understanding the deeper reality of God's kingdom has always evaded God's people. And the example that he uses is classic, right? He remembers that time when Israel is tromping through the wilderness and they're complaining and complaining and complaining. They're complaining about God. They're complaining to God. They're complaining against God. God and there are serpents in their midst and God sends the serpents to bite them. God is nothing if not creative in getting people's attention. And the cure for the bite was for Moses to hold a serpent up on a pole. A sign from God that pointed to a deeper truth and reality. The reality that God alone is the healer that God alone is the source of life, that God alone is to be trusted and relied on. The serpent on the stick was not just some lovely ornamentation to catch the people's eyes. No, it's in the knowing and in the remembering that God has always saved God's people and that God would indeed save this people, the Son the serpent, pointed them back to their relationship with God, a God who heard every complaint and met their every single need. The same is true here. The same is true here. These signs that Jesus is doing and the wine and the turning over of the tables are just the first two of seven point us to Jesus himself. It's really as simple as that. This is really quite simple. Jesus himself is all we need. It's not what Jesus can do that matters. It's who Jesus is. For God so loved the world, he says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone, everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God gave his only son so that everyone everyone the neighbors here the neighbors there the neighbors there the neighbors there the neighbors right there everyone wouldn't perish would never get lost would never fall out of the scope of god's kingdom would never not be cared for 
but that they would have eternal life, a life that begins now in the presence of Jesus, a life that continues in the presence of Christ, and a life that ends with us in eternity in the arms of our Savior. See, God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world or these neighbors or those neighbors or those neighbors or any other neighbors. The world does enough of that on the world's own terms. The world's constantly putting up signs that say, who's in, who's out, who need not apply, who can be welcome, who better go find somewhere else to hang out? Not God not God. God doesn't care about the length of your hair, the color of your skin, the language you speak, the makeup of your family, or if your sexual identity matches what the doctor assigned at your birth. God doesn't care if you're tattooed, if your hair is shocking pink, or if you're dressed to the nines, all prim and proper. God doesn't care what time of day you worship, if you're on Zoom, or in person, or slept in and are watching later on YouTube. God doesn't care if you speak eloquent poetic prayers or if you just bleh, blurt, blurt out what you want God to know. All God desires is that we know Jesus and that through Jesus we get a glimpse of God, just like Isaiah got a glimpse of God's bathrobe hem in the temple. God just wants us to be engaged and in love and enlivened by the person of Jesus. It's Jesus who matters. It's Jesus who saves us and this whole great cosmos in which we live. So friends, if you're excited about water being turned into wine or about money changers being tossed out of the temple, Hang on to your hats, friends, because what comes at the end is a sign that will break your mind and break your reality. It'll shatter every doubt you ever had that you were loved. It'll shatter every preconceived notion about what God can do. Because what God can do, God does in the person of Jesus, giving us God's entire self fully, wholly completely, even to the point of death on a cross, and even to the point of overturning the tables of death and rising again to new life, new life out of death. Every time we read the Gospel of John, we are confronted with the power of the signs that Jesus did. They are amazing, but they are signs that point us to the fact that there's a savior walking in our midst, that there is a powerful God who sent Christ to change us, to make us born anew of water and spirit as baptized children of God called to be a sign leading others to Jesus. What signs do we offer? What signs? To what reality do our signs point? I looked around the church when I was there on Thursday, and there's all kinds of signs pointing to a reality of abundance for all people all people, a welcome for all people, a God who embraces all people, loves all people, calls all people. I saw those signs everywhere around the building and in the building. But what about the signs of our own lives? The sign that was marked on our forehead that we carry with us daily. What signs do we embody? What tables do we overturn? How do we signify gracious, generous abundance from God for everyone? What signs do we offer that point to Jesus who walks with everyone? 
my friends, you are a sign. <laughs> you are a sign. Your life is, is a sign pointing, pointing to a deeper reality, a reality that you live each and every day, a reality that says that you're a beloved child. Doesn't matter if you're eight or 80, you're a beloved child. You are an heir to a kingdom. Doesn't matter what kind of house you live in, you're an heir to a kingdom. You, you are a priceless treasure. Signs on our foreheads that point us and others to that reality. Signs, signs everywhere. You are a sign. Amen. Let us confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. We pray that your Holy Spirit fills the lives of pastors, leaders, and laypersons who strive to calm this troubled world. We pray for your comfort and strength for those impacted by war and violence in any way, and for the softening of the hearts of those causing such unimaginable pain to so many. We pray for the justice and equality which seem like far away dreams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as the upstate New York Synod Assembly convenes this week, we pray for your presence and the power of the Holy Spirit among rostered and lay persons, especially as a new bishop is elected. We pray for your wisdom and guidance for those with the awesome task of electing a bishop. We pray for the faithful servants who have accepted the nomination for bishop in the name of Christ and in service to the people of upstate New York, including our own Pastor Eileen. Give them patience, courage, and vision, and may they witness to all they serve in upstate New York and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the power revealed in your beautiful creation and for all of us who have been entrusted with its care. May we ensure that present generations and those to come enjoy clean water, clean air, and the full benefits that your creation provides. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel lost, oppressed, persecuted, for those who are hungry, homeless, jobless, for those who suffer from loss or illness, for those known to us and those known only to you, especially Nancy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community and all congregations struggling to determine a safe path for the return to in-person worship as we hope and pray for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith and now live in perfect harmony with you. We offer special prayers for victims of violence and for their families and loved ones. May all those who grieve find peace, the peace that comes only from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now the deepest desires of our hearts. Prayers of comfort for Jeff and his wife as they mourn the sudden loss of their son. Prayers of healing for Chris, Maya's dad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. As you listen to the music, I invite you to ponder and reflect upon the signs in your life and where God is calling you to serve all people.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, after the um, postlude, please join us for coffee hour and feel free to share exchanges of Christ peace with one another during the postlude. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Yeah. 
Go in peace, living your life as a sign that Jesus is here, pouring out abundant grace, giving us life eternal in God's kingdom. Thanks be to God.